Well, farmed all our lives. Farmed, yeah. I never, well, I never worked outside the home because I worked in the home because I made, I, de I decorated cakes for about 35 years. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm Okay. All the kids got cakes until they were out of, birthday cakes until they were out of high school. And then their college graduation, I always fixed a cake for them for their college education, too. Yeah. I made all the grandkids' uh, wedding cakes except uh, um, Chad. He was married in Chicago. And, uh, let's see, so there was one other that I didn't make. But, uh, yeah, I, I made wedding cakes and birthday cakes and every kind of cake you can imagine. And kid cakes that would take each one of them a day, uh, hour or so to pick out the cakes they wanted for their birthday. And the date, Judy said, well, Chad's made up his mind the cake he wants. And I said, uh, he said he wants the grouch in the garbage can. I said, well, what on earth is that? <laughs> Craig popped up and he says, I know what it is, Grandma, I'll help you. So he always kind of criticized my cakes if they weren't right because I made a, uh, uh, Superman, and the picture was taking it off. I was, it was just on black and white. Yeah. So I was making these clothes different shades of black, you know. Right? <laughs> I, I was just starting it on to, to decorate it, and Craig came over and he said, Well, Grandma, his clothes aren't black, they're blue. So, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just odd things like that that happened all the years. Yeah. And then, of course, there's a farm wife. I never. I, I worked in the field probably 10 days out of all my married life. <laughs> yeah. So we were married 59 years. So. But we didn't farm that long. We farmed, uh, well, I'd say at least 50. We, we retired when we were 50, I guess. No, we were 38, but I mean, you quit farming at 50. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you live in Moequa or near Moequa when the disaster happened? No, we lived. Um, uh, we lived. We lived in Westfield, Illinois. Um, we lived over there seven years. Stanley was just a, a, a little tiny baby when we moved back to Shelby County, and we moved uh, northwest of Finley, mm -hmm. and we lived there as a pope farm, and we lived on it for. Well, I, I know we lived there. So I, we moved in a mile south, and it was about almost straight south. Um, I was 16 when we moved there, and then I lived there, and that's where I was married, where we were married there, in the house at home there. Yeah. And so farming's about all we ever did, and uh, I didn't have a high school graduation. Dwight Gilbert, of course, had a high school graduation. But it was hard times, and I, I went two years, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, I quit and went to work. I worked at shoe factory at Sullivan. And Gilbert, when it was real bad, he would get up and drive us over there and come back and get us when the work day was over. Of course, we worked long days. We worked 10 hour days. And could you believe 10 cents an hour? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's what we worked at, mid dollar a day. But uh, when Roosevelt was elected, one of the first things he did was raise the hourly rates, you know, because we were time work. Mm -hmm. And um, he raised it from 10 cents to 35 cents. We thought we were getting rich. <laughs> so that's all the outside work I did. And then, after, of course, after I was married, then I got started doing the cakes. I think I started. Took the, got the, I just got a lesson from mixtures, and, and that was in '57, I think. Mm -hmm. So, how old were you when the coal mine disaster happened? Well, in '32, I was 12. I think, let's see, I was born 15, so 30 would be 15, and then two would be I'd be 17. 17. Okay. I guess that's when I started going here, I guess, because I know that was our first Christmas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Do you remember how you heard about it? Yes, they called Mother uh, Christmas Eve. As I say, we were getting ready for our supper, and, and then we were going to have our gift. Ex and uh, um, about four o'clock, they called Mom. 
we went ahead and had our supper and everything. We didn't go over there until then the next day, but it it was a kind of a sad supper, you know, because of course we didn't know that soon. They had hopes of finding them alive, you see, and uh, so. But uh, that, yeah, about four o'clock on the on Christmas, the day before that we found. I don't know why they were that long because it happened early when they went to work that morning early. Yeah, you know. it was eight o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was it was early, mm -hmm. and uh, so I don't know um, really uh, why they didn't call. Maybe they kept thinking they'd find them soon or something. I don't know. But uh, that's how we found it out, was just a telephone call. Did your family carry on like Christmas the next day before they left? No. We just had our Christmas supper gift exchange and it was kind of a, a kind of a dull affair because it, it was kind of a put a damper on our celebration because everybody was kind of sad about it. We felt sorry for mom, of course, and, and uh, so it, uh, it, was, it was a sad time, I mean. And it was so sad standing around that rope and things out there, and all the people there had such big hopes, you know. And, and uh, it was it was kind of it was bad. And then they they they, they did have their funeral. It, it just poured down rain all day, so that made it sadder than ever, you know. Just those days they didn't put them in uh, vaults like they do now, mm -hmm. and uh, they're in the north cemetery out of. Uh, uh, and uh, Mom, uh, I know she felt bad because she said, you know, I bet they were covered with water before the noon, she thought, because they were buried that morning. And uh, she, she felt that, you know, because they didn't have a, a wall or anything, that they would soon be covered with water. And she felt bad about that, too, you know. Yeah. I don't know whether they didn't, couldn't afford a vault, I don't remember. I don't remember Vols, but I presume they had them back that long ago, but I, don't, I just really don't remember. Mm -hmm. so. What did you do when you were waiting to find out who survived and stuff like that? Well, you know, we thought they were going to find them the next day, and, and we stayed we stayed all day that first day after, on Christmas Day. And I don't remember then how many other times we went over there, but they finally got so long. Do you have how many days it was? It took them seven days to find them all. I know it was good to few, so then we had to come back home and, yeah. and everything. We had to be back home at night because we milked cows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so it was, uh, it was a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you do to pass the time while you're waiting? you are waiting? Well, we go down to Granddad's house. His, um, I think Grandpa Campbell was, I'm not sure, he was, let's see, when did they date that? They, they, my, both my grandfathers, fathers passed away in seven days, and I think it was on my seventh birthday. So we'd go down to the house because Grandma still lived there, and, and uh, Lori Campbell, do you know, you ever remember anything about Lori Campbell? Well, he was a, she of course was a half-sister, you know, she only had the one full brother. And we just go down there and say, and of course she go down. We go down to her brother's house, you know, because she says wife was still there, and the boy, several other kids were there, you know. So we just stayed with the family and say, we'd go over almost every day. I think maybe didn't stay all day, but we'd always go over there, thinking you'd hear something. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know um, what condition they were in when they found them or anything because. Uh, they didn't open the caskets or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was another thing you didn't know for sure whether you had the right body or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I never did hear that they were uh, in such bad shape that you couldn't tell who they were. And of course, the undertaker would go on because Uncle Ed lived there all his life. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't that big a town, everybody knew everybody else. You know? mm -hmm. There was a lot of Polish people worked there, a lot of Polish people. They, uh, they, most of the Polish people had big families too, and so there was just a lot, just for the, all, no more was down there, and then uh, they had such big families, there was always a lot of people around there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember when they wanted to reopen the mine, and do you remember how you felt about that? Or? Yeah, it gave you kind of a, 
I think uh, I don't think Mother wanted them to open the mine, but you know that that was a likelihood of Oweka. I mean, there just wasn't no there wasn't anything around there. You didn't have Decatur, and who could afford to go to Decatur every day and work, you know, or anything? And it just I don't know. It uh, it was just hard on the town as a as a whole. I mean, it was very hard on them because uh, just how many were killed. Um, 54? 54. 54. Yeah. I was thinking it was 54. And uh, so that was a, a big part of the miners anyway, probably. I don't, uh, I don't remember whether they had shifts at that time or not, whether they worked at night or not. I don't think they did. I don't think they did. I know they did, a, you know, they went in the morning or, and worked during the day. And, and I, couldn't, I couldn't remember whether, I didn't think they had shift work, but uh, anyway, that was... And they think they knew where they were, you know, and then and they'd dig into their five five. Then it wouldn't be a false alarm, you know, they wouldn't find them. Mm -hmm. So, and it was kind of dangerous for ones to go down there to to check, you know, trying to find them. Yeah. Because, but it wasn't a it wasn't a cave in as I understood it. It was an explosion. Mm -hmm. It was something with their light. Yeah. It exploded. Mm -hmm. I think there's too much gas down there too. Well, you see they had these carbon head headlight things and they burn fuel, you see. Mm -hmm. And if if there was gas got out and then it, it, it was those one of those lights could have sparked it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it did, but it could have. Yeah. Because those carbon lights were the way we were lit, you know, they weren't didn't have electricity in or anything. Yeah. Do you remember the funeral services for the oh, morning? Yeah, I remember them. Yeah, I did. I said it just poured down rain all day long. I remember we were at grand, Grandma's house then, uh, till time for the funeral. Or we might have been down in Uncle Ed's. I'm not sure which house we were, but we were there till time for the funeral. Yeah. I don't uh, remember whether, I don't remember whether we went to the, like they had it with the funeral home now, you know, before the funeral. Mm -hmm. And I just can't remember whether we stayed at the funeral home. I know we went to the other places, but whether we stayed there and then left there to, for the funeral. I just can't remember that. Did you go to the mass? Because I remember it said like a lot of Catholic people died and there was a really big mass. Where yeah, they, there was a lot of Catholics. Yeah, well, I think maybe all about all the Polacks are Catholic. And there was a lot of Polacks working in there. Yeah. And they had, usually had big families, and they, uh, of course, Uncle Ed had a big family, too. He had six children, so it was a, it was a rough time. How long did it take to get to Moikla? From here? Yeah. Well, we, we, Mom, we didn't, didn't go over there a lot, basically after. Uh, Uncle Ed got killed, you know, and everything. Mom, but Mom would wait just so long, and she'd say, "Well, we better go to Moika." She just started get a little like homesick, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we'd go to over there every two or three months to visit the relatives, and, uh, and of course Uncle Ed, his, his wife, they lived there with the, with the children, you know, because they weren't all that that old. Because she thought I think was around my age, and if I was only um, seventeen. Why they were they were younger kids. Mm -hmm. It only took it took us. I don't know. Back those days, we I maybe didn't drive as fast as they used to. We went up uh, just about the same way you go to Moe for today. I mean, had the road, or sometimes we we come we went west a little sooner that way, and we went through like Prairie Homes. Dad had a brother that lived there, but. Uh, it didn't take too long. I don't remember. My, I used to talk about when they had the horse and buggy. Um, I don't remember when the, the first car that we got had went over there. Um, we was into cars before I was married, you see, so uh, we all had cars by then. It took probably half an hour. 45 minutes probably. 
don't think they drove as fast then as they do now. <laughs> probably, probably not. Probably not. Did you stay at the mine site all seven days? Or? No, we went about every day or so. I mean, because we was over there several times. We would just usually go to mine and then go to some of the family's house then, you know. And uh, it was, uh, you know, it was, you said seven days, it seemed like to me it was a month. I mean, it just, it, it when you're expecting something like that, you know, it just takes forever. We, it feels like it does anyway. It feels like it takes a, a long time. We always went to a week where they had a fair. It wasn't a 4-H fair, I think, but they always had just, I don't even know what they called it, a county fair. We just always went to a week with the fair. And uh, if we got the corn laid, plowed, laid by, that at that time they plowed the corn one way and then turned around and plowed it the other way. And if we got the corn laid by, we got to go to the fair. But if we did, they didn't get the corn laid by, we didn't get to go. Of course, they farmed with horses. so. That was debatable. What you, you didn't get along very fast up those days. Yeah. Um, did you do anything for the rescuers like that were there while waiting? Well, I know a lot of people took coffee and stuff like that. I don't remember whether they took food or not. I don't remember that. But I know they, they did take coffee. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, afterwards, I don't think they did. As far as I remember, that they didn't have anything special, you know. Or mm -hmm. Did you know any of the rescuers? They said there are a lot of them from other towns and stuff. That come, you say? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was, there was nearly always people down there at the mine watching and waiting. I don't think I think there was always somebody there day and night. I think you know, and uh, but we were farmers and had cows to milk and stuff, so we c couldn't stay, you know, too late. Um, and I don't remember that Mother ever stayed over there a night. I don't think she did. I know she did when Grandpa Cavill was sick before it, well, the week he died. She stayed over there all that time. But I don't believe she did for this. I don't believe she did. But we were over there a lot of several, Maybe it was every day. I don't know, but I don't remember for sure. Did you get your coal from Moikwa or, like, or did you have something? No, in? they had coal mines here at Shepherdville. Um, it, it took so long to build this dam here, you see, because there was all coal mines underneath of it. And uh, concrete trucks, I think a man got to be wealthy. He was, um, he got in on that first, he built a uh, concrete mixing place at Finley. And I think maybe they had one down here. And anyway, they hauled uh, cement, you know, stuff. For days and days and days and days, they had to fill up all those coal mines. And that's mostly where we got ours. Because mm -hmm. we just lived, well, we lived four miles out of town. Not at that time we didn't, we only lived two miles out of town. We moved. So. Do you get to know any of the families while waiting? Oh, I think the folks did. I don't know if we kids did. Back in those days, you didn't. Kids didn't visit then. When we went to our grandparents' house, we went in and we sat out and we stayed there till we come home. You never said anything very much either. I never talked. And I, I see, I see Dwayne wrestle with the kids. You know, always has. Well, Gilbert did too. And uh, but I said, I don't know whether either one of my grandparents, Pete, dads ever did touch me. Mm -hmm. I don't ever remember him touching me. My dad lived, and his folks lived about two miles out of Shelbyville, south and west. And uh, he didn't, uh, I don't know, as I say, we, we just went in, we sat out, and we stayed there until I was ready to go home. Uh -huh. they, families weren't as, well, no, anyway, my family, they weren't as close back in those days. Uh -huh. So, I, but I don't, uh, no, I, I, I just, I just know Gilbert was, Always on the floor playing one with something, and then Dwayne does the same thing. And but we, we didn't do stuff like that in my family anyway. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I remember Grandpa had those two little trees he'd set out right out in front of the house, and uh, the front porch went right out out there, and just a little bit on each side. He had those trees, and we were warned that if if we broke a limb off, what was going to happen to us? <laughs> 
So I was halfway scared to death of my grandfather's camel. He was, he was, uh, I've got their pictures someplace. He was, but you know, they didn't call it Jerry like they do today, they called it Jerry. Mm -hmm. And one day I asked, I heard over the radio, radio, well, maybe it was in a crossword puzzle I had. There was a, something about a, a dray wagon. Do you know what a dray wagon is? What? Mm -hmm. Dwayne didn't know either. And uh, my, that's what my granddad did. He had an old wagon with two horses, great big horses, they were big horses. And uh, people, now when people wanted coal, a lot of them, they just wanted maybe a bushel mm -hmm. or two bushel, just whatever they had the money to pay for. Yeah. And he would haul coal in this old wagon with those two horses. And that, that he delivered coal to people there in Moeka. That's That was his living. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was Grandpa's living. Of course, that uncle had, he worked in the mine, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the way they did it. And that wagon was called a dray wagon. And I don't know, I don't know where that name came from. I don't, I don't really know. So he went to Moeka? Huh? For, he went to Moeka for coal? Or? No, he, they lived in Moeka. Oh, they lived At that time, anyway, okay. when I was big enough to remember it. They lived in, and in those days you always had an alley behind you. And nearly all by somebody had either a horse or something, like, had these little barns, you know, back there. And that's where he kept his horses in this little building back there. And uh, I expect the wagon probably just sat outside, but uh, yeah. So, it just, you know, they lived right there. They lived on Shelby Street. And I can't tell right now, uh, and I, I can't remember the street off that lived on. Uh, but Grandpa lived on Shelby Street. It was on the west side of the road. And I think they built a new house in there, and I, for several years I could tell which one it was. But, uh, any, there aren't any little bungalow type houses there now, and they, they lived in a small house. And I, uh, I don't think I think I can't find the house. So I guess it, there's some new houses in there, so they probably just either you kept repairing that one or building on or something. It didn't look. I I think I know what it looked like, but I can't find it. Yeah. So. Do you remember like the smells and the sounds and stuff, waiting and like? Well, of course, line. everybody was talking, <laughs> you know, just like a crowd that gets together, they, they were talking. And uh, if I remember right, they had trouble, they didn't want kids to be rowdy, you know, because that would be disrespect. And, uh, but they had a pretty big circle that they couldn't get, you couldn't get any closer than that. So in a way, that kept a lot of the kids out, you know. Of course, we didn't, uh, I don't know, uh, it's just that was in... 32, of course, we didn't have any kids yet, I guess, because we weren't even married. And uh, we were married in 36. And I can't remember if I was 15, or if I, uh, he died in, uh, when I was seven, I would have been 20, uh, been the 22nd of January. Been, so I, we weren't married for several years, a few years after. That happened, but I was, a, I was, a, I would have been 17 because it was 1932 and I was born 15. So, I don't know when they put the mon monument up either yet. Uh, it, was several, it was a few years before they put that monument up. Do they still have the museum over there? Mm -hmm. yep. Used to be downtown. Now. Now this, that Robert Camel, I give you that picture of, um, he, he was in there an awful lot. He, they had to have somebody in there all the time, you know, and I suppose he had certain days that he worked in there, stayed in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, one time, um, after Judy was uh, teaching at, at Lovington, why uh, Lovington always had such good uh, school parades. I think it was in the fall, if I remember. And, uh, we were standing along the road there, and uh, Bob was one of the ones that always they could get a little truck, you know, get a batch of them on that, would, and it always had coal miners, you know, something like that on it. That they did that in, in just respect of the mine, and they'd go through town. They were just yelling and having a good time, and I know Bob Campbell was on that a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He lived in Chicago a lot of years, but. 
And there's one of them still living, Early B is still living. He's in, I guess he's in, still in the nursing home. They had sold us something. I think somebody would should have called me. Or I would have seen it in the paper. So there's only one of Uncle Ed's family left. So how many family members did you have in the mine? Two. So two? My uncle and then his son. Oh, okay. Was, was, uh, he wasn't the oldest boy I ever left home. He had an aunt. Mom had a half-sister that sort of took him in. And I don't know where they lived all the years. They ended up in Florida later. And then there was Chad in there, and then Robert, and Cecil, and then Early B. And they were both in the mine that day? Uncle Ed and the boy, and Chad were, yeah. What was Chad's name been? They called, always called him Chad. I think it said Charles Campbell, right? Yeah. Campbell, Charles Campbell. Well, I thought his name must have been Charlie, but I never knew him as anything but Chad, you know. And why are, I, don't, I don't get Chad out of Charlie, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's what they called him. He, he had just got married, oh, about a month before or something. He married, he married a wonderful girl. I used to know what her name was, but I don't know anymore. So, that marriage didn't last very long. Yeah. What was the mood like of your family members on the way over there? Well, it was, uh, Ruby was already married, I think. No, she wasn't either. I was only 17, so she would have been, uh, uh, she, she was married when she was about 18. She might have already been married, I don't know. But she was married first, and Hazel was married second, and I was married third. Uh, so really, we kids, were, we were still just in school, biggest part of us, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and they talked about it for months afterwards, I mean, just, and then ever so often so they would have a, there would be a piece of the paper maybe on, a, on the uh, anniversary of when it happened or something, you know. And I've read some of those, but I, I didn't find any of those in here. So, I certainly didn't cut any of them out, but um, it's uh, what, Whenever you visited, like after, did you see like an effect in the community? Like, oh years yeah, after? For, for a long time it was. It was, it was just a, a sad town, I'll tell you, for a long time. Because it, it was a livelihood for so many of them. And that was sort of, that we were just maybe, I don't, I guess we kind of started out of the depression. The depression, you know, was along in 29 and 30. And this is only 32, you see. And they hadn't, uh, and they just, it was just hard because there wasn't any work to do. Now my dad, his folks always lived around. But he worked over in Flat Branch Township. There used to be a Huffman family over there. And my mom, she started working out as a hired girl when she was 12. And she worked for a, uh, a family that had several children. And she said, well, I never got away from there because every year about that time they'd have another one. So she'd still have to stay. So she didn't get much schooling. My mother didn't. And I'm glad I don't know what kind of schooling he had. I know all her kids went to high school and everything. And uh, whether they all graduated, I'm not sure, but I know some of them did. And, uh, so it was, it was a sad time because really there wasn't much news and every time if a stranger came in that's what they talked about, you know. And, and of course people had heard of it from miles around. They wanted to go see the mine. They, if nothing else, just go see where it was, you know. Mm -hmm. and, so, but it wasn't, it didn't, it didn't, sure didn't grow, I don't imagine at that time. I don't know, but I don't imagine it did. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just a, it was just a poor town, and just like a lot of others, you know, that they had what work, what little work they had, and that was it. Now, Dad worked on a farm, you know, worked on a farm, and then Mother worked for that other people, and uh, I don't know how many years she worked there. Anyway, then that's where he met her when she was working on with these people. Did it bring the town together, though, like as a community more? Not too much. I don't think too much because of the uh, people were dis different, you know. Poli the Polish people, they, they gathered together, you know. I mean, 
Now, I think the Polish people were a very close family picture. I, I don't know, but I just kind of feel like they were. I don't know whether they, whether they visited a lot with the rest of the town or not. Of course, we would see them there when we was over there, and they would, you know, at fun the funerals and things, but uh, if it did, I don't know what if it did draw them closer. Seemed like they, they lived in a certain part of town, and everybody else lived in another part of town. And uh, so I presume as, as, as their families grew, I think they did associate more with her, just their own people, maybe. Did the Depression affect you and your family personally? Oh, yeah. You didn't have much. You didn't. Corn, we got corn down to 10 cents a bushel, you know, and everything. And you didn't buy much. You buy what groceries you had. We raised chickens and we sold eggs and we milked cows. We sold cream. We separated the milk from the milk to the cream, and uh, and that was just the way it was all over the country. About all over the country did this did the same thing for miles around. I mean that was their livelihood. They they worked on the farm and they they just made a living on it. You know, some years you had good, some years you didn't, because they all farmed with horses and. and uh, you couldn't, it took so long to get anything done, you see, more or less than it does today. Yeah. We, you, and we'd live on a, like a 160 acre farm, that was a pretty good sized farm. Mm -hmm. Now then you couldn't, you couldn't feed one person on 160 acres hardly. It's, uh, it was, it was really hard back in those days. Well, you know, really, when Gilbert and I were married, it, it wasn't very good, it wasn't very good then. And I did, we had to do the same, we milked cows and fed chickens and, and ducks and sold eggs and cream. Only, only thing, we didn't separate after we were married. Uh, we, we sold milk. We had, got, had uh, people had milk routes. They'd pick them up and take them to like the cheese factory. They had a cheese factory at Shelby, only had another that saw them. And they would take your produce, but of course the cream and the uh, eggs we took to the store. You know, the grocery stores took care of those. And most of the time they didn't, some places took care of the cream, they always took the eggs and things. But then they got cream, what they call a cream station, you know, when you didn't have very much. And then later years we got to, we, uh, we, we uh, sent our milk to, uh, or cream, it was separated cream, um, and we move it into the Finley to the railroad. The railroad did a lot of pe business for people at that time. And I presume that every place that had a railroad, they did that. And uh, uh, you have to get in there, just we tried to get in uh, in the summertime, especially just in the evening before the train hit, so the cream wouldn't get cold, you see, or see before they got it to where they were taking it to. And uh, so, <laughs> Mom was glad when I got a driver's ride, but we didn't have drivers like that. But when I learned to drive, because uh, I could, Dad, otherwise Dad had to come in from the field to take that cream in, because Mom never did learn to drive. She, uh, she got, to, she tried to drive one day. We were all in there, and she turned the corner too fast and went in a ditch. And we, she always carried a little black suitcase with change of clothes for it. I wasn't very big, and. Uh, had little metal corners on it, and I hit my eye. I've still got the scar today, up here underneath my eye, where I hit that one of those corners. She never drove again. She never would drive again. She'd drive out a mud puddle if somebody was pushing. She didn't think she could get very far, but um, she she never did learn to drive. So she was. I, I was married last, and she was so glad because neither one of my sisters drove, and they were both older than I was. I was. I don't know, I just said, <laughs> I think it was on Sunday, I told Dad, I said, I want to drive the car. Okay. We cut me out and we got down the street and I made up Mary. We lived on that street, that St. Mary's Church out there is uh, at, at the end of the road there, right, right there at that corner. I drove out there and turned around and come back because we lived just, uh, we, that was a straight road, I didn't make any turns. And then the next time I drove was, uh, he got, I had to get a new uh, hay belt, and they were always unrolled. Well, you couldn't put hay up in the shed, those were curly. So he put me, put that thing behind, tied it on behind the car, 
and I got out in the pasture, drove around and around and around to drag that chain to get the kinks out of it. And uh, he made me stop every little bit, and I said, well, how's come am I stopping? He said, well, if you learn to drive, you've got to learn to stop. <laughs> he, he was kind of a witty person. And, yeah, he says, if you're going to learn to drive, you got to learn to stop and learn to, to, to stop. It's just as important or more so than driving is. Uh, so funny things happen like that. And I remember those days when we had cooked, we cooked for thrashers and hay men and all. And the neighbor down there, they, mom was going to go down and help her cook for thrashers. I don't think it was, I think it was hail mailers or something. Anyway, I said to Dad that morning, I said, can I drive? And he said, yes. And we lived right on a corner road there, and I had to get right out of that driveway and drive down that road. I thought I could do it. And he said I could. And Mom said, well, I'm not going to ride with you. I'm going to walk. And, you know, she, she just, when I said, well, I'm going to drive. I just went out and I got in the car. She, she walked over and got in that car, and she never said a word since about that about her not going, to, not going to ride with me. And then when I got married, she said, oh, you're the last one now. She didn't have anyone to drive her around. Uh, Did you do anything special on Christmas the next year? Yeah, we went and we always had our, we never always had a Christmas Eve. And uh, I remember, I don't think it was that year, it wasn't that year, but one, there was a year or two there. That, well, Gilbert and I was going, went together four years and, uh, that we had Christmas, we had to come on a horse. <laughs> he rode a horse back up there for several, you know, different times during the year he'd have to. Because uh, as a crow flies, we were just almost straight, you see, from where, where Doug lives now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where he lived. And uh, so he could go up that back road. And he, so he would more or less just go straight north. And uh, so it, but none, of the, none of the roads were were improved very much. Now they oil some roads in the summertime, but shoot, we've stuck right north north of Shelbyville here. I went one quarter of a mile. They had that had a place in there that just almost carried water all the time, and uh, we got we got stuck there. And uh, it was those days. It wasn't very wasn't, the roads weren't very nice back in those days. And we had to, and when we, of course we were kids, we. They had to take us to school in buggies because it was, the roads weren't fit. You couldn't drive a car on them at all when they dried up. Did uh, when the coal mine reopened? Did any of your family work in it again, or no? It never did reopen. The one at Moeka didn't. Don't think or did it? Does it? Say no, it? they were thinking about it. They, they oh yeah, they've talked it. about it several different times. Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't think it ever did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it reopened like a little bit. I think it opened for a couple of days or something. Like that. They might have inspected, gone down in there and checked it out or something like that. But now, but I do know they had talked about reopening and everything. But uh, I don't think they ever just really did, unless I forgot something. <laughs> I can remember more stuff back that day than I could yesterday. I forget so much anymore. <laughs> That's one of the nice things about getting old. You got a good excuse if you can't remember anything. <laughs> uh, and I'm the only one left in our family. I've got some cousins, but uh, that's the only one in my family that's left. Yeah. And Gary has one sister left. Did you know? Carl, oh, um, no, Carl Oman, mm -hmm. well, I had one girl, now he married Nell Camel, Camel. she was a half-sister, Nell and Lori, and then had a, the one they called Little Elsie, you see, Elsie was my dad's name, and they called him Little Elsie. And he's passed away now too. They had when they had Bob uh, Bob Camel's 50th wedding anniversary. Uh, we of course went to that, and his wife was there. But uh, uh, little Elsie had died before that. And I didn't really know till we went over there whether he had died yet or not. But he had. And uh, so it was. Uh, she had that one half sister. 
And she must have been just in there by herself. His mom and Uncle Ed and then uh, and then Lori and Nell and, and little Elsie. They were the ones. She buried her, her um, Grandma Camels, she had, had been married before. She had a son. His name was uh, Workman, I believe. Anyway, he lived at Macon. I ran onto a picture of him somewhere the other day. Happened to see that. I thought I had some pictures taken with it, but maybe I didn't have a camera at that time. I don't know. But uh, cause I could just see that string around there with all those people out there, about 10 deep buildings all around it. Uh, but it must have been. Because one, I, I found, if I find that again, I'll, I'll send it to you. That one of the mine where they're standing all around. Uh, mm -hmm. You took the one with Bob. Did you get to keep it? The one of Bob kept the one I had of his son, other son. Did I give that to you? Or did right you? there, sitting on your. Oh seat. yeah, that one. Yes. You, you can have that. Oh. Because it's got it's got some writing. Um, uh, Says even Santa Claus was killed. I don't. I presume the person that purpose and all that. We always had different ones, you know. I got one in here covered me in Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. And uh, friends, relatives recall Christmas Eve of 1932, when 30, 56 miners died. A hundred brave, hundred brave children fined for for several months. So that's got a good little bit of yeah. of history in it, you see. Oh, here it is. Yeah, here's his picture. See all of them out around here? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know they were in the same picture. I'd seen that, but I didn't know they were in the same paper. Yeah. Huh. Did you hear any other stories about miners or anything like like the Santa story? Um, no, not at this time, I don't think. There's been a lot of mines uh, accidents. So you remember there was one out in the East Coast about a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, or the I think so. They have, I think they probably have safer equipment and stuff than they did uh, back here because that's that's been oh well let's see, 32. I was 17, so that's been a lot of years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said they had people bring in wood from their land to oh. prop for support and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Well, you know, people, a lot of them, that's all they had, and they'd have, they'd have burnt wood nearly all the time, but if they had like a baby and you had to stoke a fire to keep it halfway warm during the night, mm -hmm. then they would put in a little coal, you see, mm -hmm. and it would hold the fire better than, and we had the stoves, you could shut the, shut the damper off and turn it down and it would, uh, wouldn't be as hot, but yeah, it would keep the chill off, you know, for mm -hmm. so. Huh. Yeah. That's the way we did things back then. So. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all the questions we yeah. had. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, then you just take that, because you, you may get a lot of news out of that that you want oh, okay. to write about. All right. Okay. And can, yeah, can we take a picture? Shoot. Can we take a picture of like your mom and your sure. father? Yeah. I, I wrote one to two or three of these in there. Yeah, probably. Let me see if there is a baby. There's one in here. Yeah. There, I know there's a bigger one in here. 